welcome to the Three Men in a Movie podcast. This week, we're looking at Paper House, a 1988 film. Now, Michael, you chose this film, and before I go into a little detail about who is in it, can you tell me why you chose this film? It was one of them movies that when I was a kid, it was in all the horror sections of the video shop, even though it turns out it's not actually a horror. And I do remember some scenes when I caught it late on Channel 4, and it always burned in my head certain scenes, so I thought, why not? And it turns out none of you have ever heard of it, so I thought it would be a good one for us to do. No, I literally never heard of it, which hasn't happened many times when watching a film, which is really good. I really enjoyed that discovery process. Same as you, Richard. I, I had never, until you mentioned it, until you picked it that week, I'd never, ever heard of it. Now, it does star Charlotte Burke, who is the young Anna in this film. She has not been in anything else prior to or after this film. But is still alive. It's Unlike a lot of them. Yes, I had heard that about the young lad. What was his name? Mark. Um, yeah, Mark. He died a little while after this film. Oh, no. Uh, it was dedicated to him along with another film. Died in 1994, age 20. Yeah. Oh, no. So it was quite sad. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah. So this film you could say... I almost. just put two more marks on my grade at the end. Uh, Jane Burtish, who was the teacher briefly at the start of this film, she is also a main character, as is Glenn... I'm going to say Heedley. Heedley, yeah. Heedley. Uh, she has most recently been in The Circle with Emma Watson and Tom Hanks. Oh, yes. But more famous for... More famous for Don John. I was going to say... <laughs> I love Don John. I, I was going to say Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. There we go, yes. So, going back... Who, who, who also died last year. Oh, goodness. Well, so this is just so many deaths. This is a macabre this is a very start to the podcast. Beat, you know, they're quite, I think our listeners are quite used to us being a bit more upbeat than this. Oh, goodness. But you were saying at the start that the girl, she's not performed in anything after this. Nothing, nothing. Well, I thought she was really good. Am I the only one there? There were parts where she was really good and there was parts where she was really bad. She had that I know more than you look going on perfect, but the interaction with her, with her mother I thought would have been... Oh, that was more to do with her mother. Her mother <laughs> Ah, but there's a reason for that. Did you know two days before the film yes, was going to... Yes, she had to put an English accent, am I right? Yes, yes. yeah. For the uh, people who are listening, two days before the theatrical release of the movie, the production company decided the mother was going to have an English accent. So Lena Headley had to come back. Lena Headley had to come back and read up everything. That's gonna, that was one of my points that we're going to get into much, much later about... I don't think you can discount that. it as a con, though. It's still a con. I definitely can. It, it really there was no need. Was takes it? away. It really took me out of the film in a major. No, way. no, I think it is a con. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you said it wasn't. Her, her acting is still a con, even though there's a reason for it. Oh yes, yeah. Oh, there's a, I mean, yeah, legitimate reason for it. Yeah. But it, why bother? Just leave it. I, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. But anyway, we've kind of done initial thoughts, but we're gonna just see if you've got any more, Richard. Initial thoughts of the film. Viewing. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Twenty, twenty-five minutes in, I was like thinking, Michael. You can have this back. Sick of this. Um, but, but then a scene happened, um, which I think I'll talk about later because we're going through our favourite scenes, etc. And instantly I was wrapped, and I like there was bits in it which from then on disturbed me. I know you said I, we had a brief discussion beforehand. You said you weren't disturbed at all True. during this film, but True. there were bits in it that I found incredibly disturbing, and it twisted for about twenty-five minutes in, and. I loved it from then on, but 25 minutes, I was like, this is just... It, it was like an episode of Coronation Street gone bad or something. Just, ugh. But 25 minutes in, loved it. And I think that was the reason for the slow start. So that was my initial thoughts, anyway. Michael? Well, I was looking forward to seeing it again. And I'm in the same boat as Richard. When I first stuck around, I'm like, God, it, it, it was very reminiscent of them gritty TV family dramas they had on the TV yeah. back then. I, I think, and I'm I think, like, have I made a mistake? I think my wife said he watched it with, God, what is this? It's so 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I know, I know the hairstyles, everything, but yes, but then, even she got wrapped up in it. And yeah. my teenage son, who was like, Oh, really? And then suddenly, he really liked it. So. For the listeners out there, Richard just pretend to be asleep and woke up. That's it, thank you, yeah. Forgot we haven't got the camera yet. <laughs> yes. Did but, you... Sorry, Michael, I was just going to say, um, when I mentioned earlier on, there were just a couple of scenes, and I, I, I made a mistake there, there was a couple of images that stuck into my head from the, from when I first saw a few clips of it 20, 30 years ago. It, what, it, when I watched it again, it was still, the feeling was still there, it was still, had the memories hadn't lied to me, it was still, some of them scenes, I'm going to remember them for another 30 years. I go with that. Gaz? When, uh, yeah, just before I get to my initial thoughts, you said you, you watched it again. When did you first see it? Well, I, I'd never actually seen all of it. 
I'd seen a couple of ch clips, late night Channel 4, maybe uh, 1990. Oh, had, wow. a, had a push yeah. um, I remember seeing a trailer maybe a two three years later on when I'd rented a video but I'd never actually seen the full film from the start also um, the trailers did not do the film justice all this marked him being the intellectual Nightmare on Elm Street or the British Nightmare on Elm Street I think is why we haven't heard of it today because all the all of that was nothing to do with the film it did it, it did this just this just just in my the opinion only Similarity to Nightmare on Elm Street is she falls asleep as, as dreams, but that could be called many films. Yeah. When we get on to music as well. Yes. Yeah. The music we work with, the music is a big part of why I like this film. Now, initial viewing, I don't, I neither hate nor like this film, and I'm glad we ultimately, at the end of this, will have different opinions. Yes, that's, good. that's the whole point. But I'm glad we kind of agree on the first sort of 30 minutes of the film, because mm -hmm. thankfully Richard gave me a heads up and said, just stick with it. And I did, mm -hmm. but that first half an hour was some of the most difficult film watching I've ever, <laughs> ever oh, experienced. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. It was, it was it, Even so I thought cool. it was a little bit like, oh, come on. I was worried I'd made a wrong choice there. I, I, I questioned if we should ever do this podcast anymore. If that's going to be his choice as well. <laughs> but, uh, so initial thoughts, kind of along the same lines. That's, that's good, I was in a way. Both... Yeah impressed again and disappointed at the same time if that's possible there were some bits I really really loved and there were some bits I was like oh dear what have I done but you were pretty much all dear what I've done right the way through were you? after that first half an hour it picked up and it, it kind of kept going up and down for me for various different reasons so I'm very down the middle of the road with it I don't like okay. it I don't hate it It's I've seen it and that's a good thing I think do you think it would have been different if you had watched it 10 years ago I think one? so because the amount of films I've watched in the last 10 years I've probably been spoiled by how, they're, how they've been made how they're made now compared to back then and this film you can tell this just looks like a made for TV movie which, which is, isn't a negative at the, if you watched it at the time because they all probably no I it agree right. it was the camera director and that was very TV movie it, it, oh, and honestly that first 30 minutes that <laughs> little girl talking <laughs> the <laughs> awful <laughs> dreadful <laughs> voice <laughs> and line delivery I don't think it was her it was her mum oh, that, well that made it worse but oh. if, I, if, I, if I ignore the fact that that was there's a driving dropped. sequence um, oh <laughs> yes which is 80s cheesy movie starts in the background it's like Gregory's Girl or something it's um. You know that's uh. You can't actually get that anywhere. That that piece of music. It was pulled from the soundtrack. Yes. Oh, right. Whereas Hans Zimmer's the whole of his score you can get. No problem. Well, no, because the score is fantastic. I, I <laughs> that's the only it. existence of it, isn't yeah. it? That piece I don't of music. I didn't mention Hans Zimmer. You know, he was the. Hans Zimmer, one of my three favorite composers. And when his name came up as a composer, I was like, um, this is it. Michael's chosen a crack. I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying it's connected, but a couple of years after I think, I he did the score, he yeah. really came into a demand. Yeah, I think um, it's not connected. No, the, it's definitely the score not. in this was very much, you could tell he was just starting out, wasn't it, in yeah. his career. But it was very good. I think the sound for this was the, one of the best, if not the best, parts of the film. Yes, I know. And for me, I've even wrote a note on here about the sounds. Um, so, we, should we do the music section now? Music and sounds? Yeah. I think we, we've, yeah. we've drifted nicely uh, yeah. into music. Yeah. I think we've drifted, evolved into it, if you like. But the music at the beginning was a little out of place, I thought. And then when I saw. It was a very early score by Hans Zimmer. You can see, you can hear a few things in that, but what was the mix of grind and then classical? Mm. It was a bit of, you know, remember grind from back in the eighties, nineties, like the tapping of metals and yeah, stuff. Remember yeah. that. And then you, the next bit was just pure classical music. And then after the first half an hour, then the score of the film came in. I think the the first half an hour for me it was very disjointed. It didn't work yeah, which at is all. When you got that eighties cheesy music, where did that come from? Or they just found it on the floor or something. That was so strange. <laughs> it was so out. It was like a filming an, an episode of some TV series yeah. instead of the film. And they stuck this 80s cheesy music on. Um, but other than that, I, I thought the music was great. I really like the music. Uh, as I say, after half an hour period, it, it perfectly suited the mood. What did you use to are more fans of the films I'm going to mention in a second? There was a lot of um, bell type music. What did that remind you of? And I'm immediately and it go, everything goes silent. Did you not hear the um, Freddy chip, chip bells in the music yeah, I did, or not? Yeah. I did, the There's about two longish scenes with that on. Oh my yeah, goodness. The, the music, oh no, don't we have to watch it, it again? It did make me feel a bit more. It didn't. 
remind me a little of Nightmare on Elm Street. It was weird. It did, yeah. But I think that's more to the point they were trying to market it, maybe, as a Nightmare on Elm Street for the UK audience. Because it definitely wasn't. So I don't know whether... Hands that was definitely around. part of the um, the aftermarket in any way. I can t- I so have that. Hans written that music to make it fit into that mould? Is that why? Do you think he'd been told to do that? I can't find much to do with me. There's actually I a lot of mystery to do with the soundtrack and music of this film, to be honest. Well, I don't think that'll be written anywhere that he had, but maybe we can assume he has. Maybe he was inspired by The similarities are so... As, as a young yeah. composer, inspirations abound. Maybe he was inspired by You can say a lot of things about the first Freddy music, but the, the music on that really was part of it. Oh, it yeah. really made it, definitely. Why do we always go back to Nightmare on Elm Street? It, it's full circle now, that's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's more in our heads, I think, because we've recently discussed it. Yes, yeah, I think so. There's a, there's a couple of particular bits of music, and they fall into my good points of the film, but there's a, a bit late on in the film, um, little Anna encounters something in that dream house, and there's just... An amazing strike of the guitar I've at got, that point. Yes, and guitar right. riffs near the end when the dad shows up. Yes. That's amazing. And then just as there's another one right at the end as the credits are rolling, it's this music that's been throughout the film and then all of a sudden another guitar riff yeah. and I was like, that, that is one of the best parts. I've got the yeah, electric car when dad electric guitar when dad appears, awesome. That's what I've well, yeah, <laughs> wasn't used a lot, but I'm it was amazing. I thought it was a bit cheesy. <laughs> no, I did. No, you're wrong. I thought it was very <laughs> cheesy, that bit. No, we're getting up on you there, two to one. That was I'm simply not agreeing one. to disagree. Just right. yeah. And then they, they, they go into the hide and seek, and you had the numbers yeah. and all. And oh, yeah. That was good. Oh, but that's, I think that, I was just going to go with the music there. That was, that's more of the, uh, that's another good point. It, well. was, it, was a, it was a score that was all over the place, if you think yeah, about it. Yeah, very much. But... In a dream world, I think that could it, be part of. I think yeah. it contributed to the surrealness of it yeah. as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. definitely. For sure, you put your posh voice in the show on there, Richard. I I could, I oh watched, yes, very, very. Yeah, sure. I actually watched this film two and a bit weeks ago, and I forgot about the nightmare links because I've actually written here intro music when she first enters the dream. Very nightmare. I think yeah, I think so I assume, just about remember that. So I assume yeah. that's what I meant there. Yeah. Very nightmare. So you kind of picked on it, yeah, on it unconscious, started, subconsciously. Yeah. 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 Like a dream. Yeah. 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 So, so the music, a very good aspect of this film. It was unusual, but I enjoyed it. I think it did lend itself to the film and what was going on. Yes. Mainly. I didn't really have an issue with it, apart from that it is cheesy porno music. Oh. In the car. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Anyway, we've already touched lightly on the direction, and uh, and how it to me felt like a, a very classic eighties TV movie. You say that, but I think the the shots, some of those, maybe when they were out of the dream world, yes. Yeah. But I thought when you went into that dream world, you had that house, and that was such an iconic location. It's desolate, barren. The shots of that house. The image that oh, yeah. that's yeah. the image that was always painted. I was just about to say that the first time she goes to the to the what I'm going to call the dream world, that long that far off shot of the house, spectacular. It was almost like two films, I think, for me because I think everything. When you're in the dream world, I love. Yeah, I'm Maybe agree when with came that, yeah. out because the acting was of, of a time and the direction was of a time. Very deftly kind stepped of, around. Though. It kind of dragged me out a bit, a bit maybe. Yeah. But by the by the end of the film, by the last half hour, forty minutes, I was so involved. It kind of didn't affect me in that way. But I think I think that's where you're coming from, um, Gaz, when you talk about how it shot like a TV movie. Well, um, it was a very Bernard Rose, the person who directed it. Yes. He's gone on to do two really good films I think um, Candyman and Ivan's XTC Candyman isn't very good at all it's brilliant that's what I mean oh, yeah. but anyway he's also before this did you know we had done um, Relax Frankie Goes to Hollywood oh, I did not know that and um, Red Red Wine oh, yeah. oh. but even then when it, you see them I'm, I'm thinking maybe you're right in saying that the direction was purposely dull in the real world maybe, that, maybe it's, it's yeah. to define the yeah, both no, separate no, maybe there was a reason that. for your boredom oh no so he's it was all part of he's it he's tricked you into being bored master bald. plan I'm definitely going to have to watch this again yes, with, with a refreshed image of it damn damn we've kind of done it again um, this director has done music videos and then gone to film we've gone back to Friday the 13th, 13th again no, 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 no that's what I meant yes that's what you meant sorry caught, caught, that. caught my mind sorry <laughs> I'll try that again Anyway, yes, direction was interesting because you had the slower style in the real world and the bleak 
desolate, I thought brilliant direction and, and I, I just loved it. I loved every part of the dream world, I thought it was fantastic, especially when the Does father we... appears and it just all oh, yes. goes mental. Yes. But yeah. yeah. I really like this. No, I think I think with with now a refreshed look on it, the out of dream sequences. I'm still I'm still going with I don't like them. But yes, I agree with you. In the dream world, every part of it I loved. I like that scene when the old railway location station when she went down a hole. Or something. She got lost down a hole. She's, well, she, she just did she collapse or did she fall asleep or something like she that. She collapsed. That was it, yeah. I don't know. There was a shot of this old railway station. and I thought that looks really good. But then these two girls started acting badly and talking about snogging. And, I was and like, putting, oh, the, putting a cheesy yeah. lipstick on her. Oh, yeah. oh, goodness. Any, anyway. That's when I first went. I think I might have made a mistake. But no, <laughs> no, I don't think I did in the end. Uh, anyway, uh, shall we go into pros, our main pros of the film? Well, I'd just like to lightly touch on, because um, it doesn't... I use IMDb for a lot of my sort of information gathering. And That's I good. thought this was a horror film. Well... But it doesn't class it as such, even though it definitely is, because it's got elements of it, which some of which are good. I, I'm going to more fantasy. Yeah. Adult okay. fantasy it does list it as a, dr- uh, I think it's drama fantasy. But when I was when this first came out, I was what eight years old, mm. and uh, maybe when I saw a few clips, ten, eleven, and when I saw the trailer, twelve, maybe it was always pushed to me as a horror. But no, I, I think that there's a, it, it it's a, just a dark fantasy. I think I'd go with that because there are fantasy films which really scare you yeah. in parts. Don't forget, what was that? Um, a Never Ending Story that was about loss and death right the oh, way goodness, through. Yeah, yeah. You watch that as an adult now and you're like, how did I enjoy this as a child? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, there are scenes in lots of fantasy films that scare you, and I think, I think I'm with Mike on this. It wasn't a straight horror film at all. There was one particular scene which I thought was incredibly well done. I think she had a slight flashback to her dad on the beach, and that was. Jump scare. Oh, I know and that. that was amazing. That was the point where it won me over. Yeah. And it, but the thing is, it, because it had been so slow, for half an hour, I'm like, oh, and she's just looking at her dad on the beach. I was like, oh my god. I was, I was like, taken aback. I think it, I literally so, just yeah. shouted, Dad! Really loud. Um, which was weird. Played by Ben Cross. Yeah. 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 Yes, he was really good, I thought. Um, but yeah, I mean, pros. Well, we're, we're leaning into pros just yeah. there. I was kind of touching onto it and blending there. So yeah, go pros. I mean, would you want to do just the acting and the actresses first? Okay, we can do that. That's cool. Okay. Sorry, Free flow. Al- always evolving. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so acting. I really liked the main girl in it. Past, I know at the start she was a little bit wooden, uh, but I thought she did really well in the part. Um, uh, yes, I'm getting some interesting faces around the table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, she was two extremes for me. Like there was lots of issues, brilliant that, especially in the dream world as well. Yeah, she was fantastic in that. Yes. In the other world though, when she lot thought she had been the pitcher, and she was running to the trash men and wrecking her room. Oh, I've seen less woods in that than. Mm. I don't want to finish that sentence, mm. but but at the same time, she done a lot great as well, especially when she was talking to another character and she knew she knew something that they didn't. Type of look, perfect at that, and but some of it was just like. Uncomfortable much. She did, she had a lot of good subtle uh, facial expression, a lot of good subtle facial expressions, but just she, uh, the animated stuff. Yeah. yeah. But then again, she was only a young first first acting role. First film, yeah. I know, but t- uh, to me, the 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 normal or the basic acting stuff she really overplayed, and the the complicated stuff that only really big and renowned actors do, she did really well. I think when he got really dramatic in that final third, and um, I thought she was fantastic then. Especially at the end, when it went very dark at the end, when she's on the edge of that cliff. Oh, she goodness, yeah. Oh, good, yeah. I thought yeah. That she did it really well. Yes. Um, I suppose maybe maybe it's a thought process that a child can act better at more extremes of the spectrum than in the middle, which is what she had to do when she, in that, in, when she was at home with her mum. Yeah. And she just had to act. So maybe she'd be better at acting at the most extreme of the spectrum, and she'd learn to come to the middle a bit. And I think it's a shame she's not done anything after it. Because she had this raw talent. I'm going to say that. Raw definitely. Talent. Most definitely. Can't not disagree with that at all. And like you just hit on there, if she had carried on, just wondering where she'd be today. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon of the lad? What's his name? Mark? Mark, Mark I think he was... I think he was... I thought he was okay, yeah, yeah. Understated yeah. performance. As it was, because he was, he was quite young, isn't he, in the film? Yeah, so I, really like, I really like how his character's initially introduced and then develops. In that she's she thinks she's just drawn him, but he's actually a real life 
person, yeah, he's like her. In limbo. Almost. Yeah, I, I always thought at one point he must have been in a coma because he's constantly there when she's there. So I thought he was in a coma at one point. But is he in a coma? Well, at one point he's gone home, so either he's woken up from the coma and he's gone home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the good things about this film, there's so many ways to interpret it. Yeah, it happens. I, I wrote at the end, I just wrote, um, what is real in that? What's real? It's not the Matrix. No, it's not the Matrix. Um, but yeah, which part was there real? There is you no know? spoon. And it's how the, it's how the real world, real, uh, what happened in the real world was directly affecting what happened in the dream yeah. world, which I thought was very clever. When the dad's pounding her on the chest and you find out she had to get seen. Oh, that was horrible. Great it was harsh, scenes. It? Oh, goodness. I was so disturbed. It was horrendous. But back to the acting of the little boy, Mark. I thought very yeah, Elliot Spears only did five things. A very understated performance, as he was very ill, so it had to be. I thought he was really good. Um, I found the snogging between him and the girl very... Very cringeworthy. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've got that on here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I loved it because it was such an incredibly tender relationship between the two and I really liked that and I thought they did that ever so well. Despite her foibles, if you like, and her acting, the main girl, I thought her relationship with the boy felt real. Yeah? And I thought it felt really real and there's a bit when they're sat on a cliff in the, and the grass is blowing and it's, it's a lovely scene and I just thought incredibly tender and then they snubbed and it was like, ugh. Why did they do that? Why include that? They didn't need to snog. No, I suppose they didn't. They don't even look like they're old enough to be snogging. Maybe I'm just... Uh, well, a friend was talking a lot about it at the beginning. Yeah. I think a lot of the film for me, I think anyone, everyone can take their own interpretation of the overall film, but I think well, the underlying story of it was two lost souls finding each other. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why they used that to show the tenderness, the friendship, their initial loneliness, and then opening up to each other throughout the whole story. Well, they, didn't, they didn't need the kiss, did they? Are you agreed on that? I've, they, I found it a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. It was like like I was being a creepy tongue. Maybe just a peck. Uh, him, uh, I think I would not, have preferred. Not, there was full on tongues there. Yeah, I think I would have preferred. Maybe if Mark it, was into it. If they had just like held hands or something, something Maybe, that yeah. signifies what Rasp what was going on in yeah, the relationship. That but, yeah. Yeah, it was too much. Okay, I think yeah, I, I think I agree with you coming from that. Yeah, yeah. What about now? Curveball, slight curveball. The dubbing of the mother's lines. Oh. We've we've gone onto that. We've done that. But I think her performance, if you like, of a mother in that situation, I thought was very good. Did you? I did, yeah. Did, oh, you apparently no. did not. I like this. Go, please. It's just really awful. The whole, the whole yeah. thing. Oh, Anna. Yeah, like, but again, that's the this the no, late dubbing, isn't it? It just took me out of it. I it did. It took me. It took me out of it as well. She had to do the English accent. I don't care. It took me out of the scene. She was. But the way not she carried herself in the scenes, not thinking about her <gasps> lines. Maybe if you mooted it, I'd like it. Great. Okay, great. Wow. That's I, don't know, I don't know if that's excellent a Excellent analysis. Acting, no, no. Well, my opinion, <laughs> Glenn Headley is a fantastic actress. And in this, maybe she wasn't as good as she was supposed to be, but I'm not going to do judgment because I think, you know, a good portion of a person's acting, it's the same reason I oh, won't watch sure. dubbed foreign films, I'll watch them subtitled. So oh. I can get, still get the vocal connotation of what people are saying in their I movies. I've never watched a dubbed foreign film for, for a bit of a chuckle. So it's not how, how badly they match the voices up. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I get what you're saying there. Um, and that was the problem. And yeah, a massive part of the acting is, of course, your voice and how you project. Well, yes, voice. of course. And without true. that, you're going to lose a lot. So maybe I'm being a bit harsh on it. Talk me out of it. I think the other two big Ben Cross as the dad was good. Yep. Uh, liked him. Uh, Gemma Jones as the doctor was good. Oh yes, I did like her actually, the doctor, yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously Elliot Smyers as Mark was fantastic. Yep. Charlotte Burke, like you like you said, was brilliant in stuff and not as good in the other, but still really good for the thing. I think overall for this film, I think the acting is pretty damn good. But I suppose from for the time it was made and the type of film it is. I think yeah, the, the, he could be a yeah. bit more lenient towards maybe the bad things in it. I think the father in particular, because the journey, he's, he wasn't in it a lot, mm. you know. But you got the impression he was yeah. away all the time, and, and drinking and, and alcohol. And the journey he went on to where he was at the end, from where you thought he was, yeah. somewhere in the middle, you were like, oh, I should be, why am I scared of this? Is he the bad guy? Is he the guy I should be scared of? And at the end, comes to the realisation that no, he's, he was just a bit lost himself, really. Yeah. So he made quite a journey, despite hardly being on screen. So I think that says something of his performance. I think that's another that's another good thing I like about this film: the story and and the characters in particular, and how they, like you say, they start and they end. When you watch the film, and you think what they're going through, what they've been through. The, in the writing, the dad makes half of his journey without even being on screen. Exactly. 
Exactly. It's great. Yeah. It's an incredible storytelling. Very, very good. The writing in it, I think, spot on. Um, it brings a lot of movies in the 80s that we've obviously watched um, are very much stuck in the 80s. A lot of this movie, you can try and, you can take the script and make today and you're not going to change that much of it, really. No. Maybe mention a mobile phone once or twice. It, yeah. the stu- it's very, yeah, it's written in a yeah, way. I can see what you mean. There's not a lot you add in. No. There? Not that they'll make it any different, really. You can't like, use them, watch it today and still feel there with them. It's only the fashion and there's you know, certain elements which take you back to, oh, this is definitely the 80s. Well, it's all coming back now today, anyway, isn't it? Right, exactly. Yeah. Fashion is a, is a vicious again, circle. Everyone's was listening to Duran Duran, aren't they? So. Never the, stopped. <laughs> Never stopped. <laughs> and the, the quality of the story is, is it makes this one of the few films that I really want to read the source material for. Uh, Marion's Dream yeah. by, I forget the girl's name, woman's name. One more, uh, by Catherine Store. It really the quality of this story, whether that's how it was adapted. I've even wrote it's put down on my to read list as well, saying yeah. as you to have a good read into it, because I think I don't know how much they took from it and done themselves. Because the, the other writer, um, Matthew Jacobs, he's done some okay stuff, you know, Lorca and the Outlaws, The Ninja Mission, some younger the. De- the younger Diana Jones stories. Oh yes, yeah. Unfortunately, he helped write the 1996 Doctor Who revival. Oh. Yeah. Oh, was, I remember being so excited for that. Tell awful. me about it, man. No. So miserable. I was. And that guy still gets jobs at comic cons. He's done a lot on the audiobook side, so he's been. He's got a lot of fan base on that playing the Doctor in that. Yeah. Hmm. Still well, made a career out of one terrible Doctor Who episode. That's so I, I think he had a bit of a career before that. Though. Well, maybe. <laughs> with Nail and I just throwing that oh, one yeah, out there yeah, yeah. That. but I think the it's one of the sad. strongest points of this movie was definitely for me the writing of it and the ambiguousness of the at the end yeah. where what actually was happening and what did happen what? which part what at what point was it did she wake up or did she ever wake up I, th- I, I believe oh, are we against this now we're going right to the end we'll, should we save that for nearest the end we've got through the good and okay. bad yeah yeah, okay. yeah. Where do you want to move on to? So we're going to transition now into what were your good parts? What were the parts you liked most? What favorite scenes? Kind of favorite thing? scenes. Great. Can I start this one? Yes. I'm not going to talk specifically about scenes per se because I know Richard's got a few of the same ones as me there with the uh, CPR and stuff. What I'm going to discuss is um, the house itself and the drawings. Mm. What I particularly liked about it is when she drew the image of the house and you got to the house, you could see pretty much the house was made of paper. And you could tell it was that house, but it wasn't too cartoony or child playish. Yeah. And when she went in, and she then realised it was barren, and she drawed some other things like the legs, but they were no good. And then when she drawed the ice cream machine, but she forgot the cups for it, so <laughs> she couldn't use it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but when she went and drawed the other things like the, and then she went back in there like the oversized radio, the over the coca-cola bottle that was five times too big the chair that was too small because it was although not cartoon it was still related to how she drawed it i thought that was a really nice image and then near the end after she'd scrumpled the paper up and went back in when everything was dark and stuff yeah would well, you see the lines on the window yeah and they, they looked like pencil lines yes yes i just uh for me that that was the best part the, the little things you saw in the background even though the dream world was very minimalistic I found there wasn't there was a house and there was a garden and that was it around yeah, it yeah. there wasn't much in the house but the little things that they'd done to it all really made it for me in the dream world I thought were really nice little touches absolutely agree the, the, one of the best aspects was the house and the way it was it grew over time with the things she put in I think it was one of the best parts yeah I definitely go with that um, I loved every scene in the house as I've said before um, just something that's came to me as we were talking there when she first visited the house and everything was quite light and it looked like and you would make the ice cream machine and all the oversized objects and it was quite you know you were quite optimistic about this girl and this young boy um, he kept saying he's coming didn't he am I right referring to the father she meant well she mentions he mentioned someone's coming at one point yeah. doesn't he now what is he referring to there is he referring to death do we think Definitely. or is he referring to the dad I I not while I was watching it, but I think it was death. The boy, when you found out in the real world, the boy was literally killing himself, waiting to die. Yeah. Didn't you, in the real world? And I think he might have been. Because I think the dad only came into it, was 
that was I think that was her mani manifestation think, of death. I was about to say that I think that's her manifestation because she's got this poor opinion of him because of his drinking issues, which is mentioned very briefly, mm. but instantly gets you thinking. And I think it's there's not go, they don't go into much detail because he actually by the end of the film you've got a different idea of what he is. So you only go into briefly about his drinking issues, um, and then you've got that scene where he suddenly goes, <laughs> and you like, and you instantly don't like him regardless of what you may know about him. So when he does appear, and those scenes I found really scary. Minimal as well. Yeah. There was a scene, I was about to come to it, when he's on the top of the ridge, is yeah. there, you just see his silhouette. And I think it's when she's scrubbed it out until he's got no eyes, he's got the hammer. Oh, I, that was like, what? what's happened? What's happened to this film? I was, you know, I, I was start, starting to get into it, but I thought, this has gone dark really dark I think you are right I think it is the manifestation of death because the little boy had no idea who that chap was did he no and he did say uh, when she when she first met him when she went upstairs and spoke to him he did say and he knew he wasn't very well and he, he I think he knew that it was coming to an end ok yeah so we had the scene where he had the hammer on top of the ridge really disturbing and the only bit I found even more disturbing about this and I just put this will haunt my dreams a lot is when he's pounding on her chest. Oh, that was brutal. And uh, the world's cracked open because she's hasn't she, she set fire? She set fire to the paper. The she, yeah, she tore she torn off her dad or what be, was supposed to be. Because I think the little boy was telling her to do it. To yeah, try that's and get right. Rid yeah. Of the father. Yeah, and then as she tore, 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 as she tore it off, I'm not sure if she was intentionally or intentionally put it over the flame or it accidentally happened, but that flame then sort of yeah, the world literally cracks and he's just there with no eyes. Because she crossed them out yeah. and, and pounding yeah. on her chest, and I'm like, oh, this is horrendous. You know, I didn't. From half an hour ago, when it was two young girls talking about snogging in a desolate railway station, and I'm, and I'm falling asleep. To this, brilliant. And I also, I think, just before that, he appeared in the house and just went, "Daddy's here." I'm like, oh god. The hide and seek game as well. Yeah. The way he counted. Oh, the, that whole sequence from when you see him at the back on the back on the uh, horizon there. That whole sequence was incredible. And the candles, when she went in the room with all the candles. Oh yeah, oh. And yes. they all blew out. Yeah. And I, I don't know, maybe you'll instantly tell me what it was on the wall. Was it, is it like a big radio? Yeah, yes. a huge radio, yeah. It yeah. is, yeah. Because she, she drew it and I think her mum saw it and she said, what's that? And it's a radio and the mum was like... It's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's too big. Right? Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> but it was, set, I can't remember what it was saying. It was. I need to go back and listen to yeah. that because I wrote that in my notes. I need to go back and listen to that properly because um, it was. I tried to. It was very garbled, but there's something on it, there, isn't there? Yeah. Or I is there think... nothing on there? And that's what it's trying to make you think. I don't know. But I, I don't know that because I'd maybe forgotten that. I know it was a radio, but I'd forgotten why it was there. I was even more disturbed by that, so I thought that was the point of that radio. But yeah, it was saying something. I'm sure I made out a few words, but I can't remember which. But yeah, all of those scenes. Um, I just found how she had this power over her dreams quite disturbing as well. And because she has this attitude in the real world of baby being a bit of a know-it-all, mm. I just found that when she had all this power over this dream world, it was, I thought it was quite disturbing. Anyway, just a Michael. quick point there, when in the real world, at the very beginning when she's in the school, and then she gets sent outside, and then she starts to look through the glass, I thought, I don't remember this being a Carrie type film, because she gave that look, didn't she? But no, it didn't go that way, but it did start out, it was going to be something like that, didn't it? One bit, one bit I unexpectedly laughed at was when she got sent out of the classroom at the beginning, and then that other kid just stands up and starts clapping. Oh, yeah. And then the teacher instantly goes, sit down. I, I lost it, I don't know why. I really like that opening scene. It just reminded me so much of going to school. <laughs> People getting sent out of lessons and just standing there. Because I think I had to, I got sent out. I was very good at school. I love you know, mm. listeners. Mm. Um, but I did get sent out of geography once for doing a massive fart. Um, <laughs> and I remember the tension of standing in the corridor waiting for another teacher to walk past, which is what happened to her, isn't it? So, cause yeah, the look, the look that teacher that gave her. really weird. Yeah. But that, that, that instantly took me back, and I'm like, oh, I've, and I was into it then, then it dwindled a bit for a while, as we talked about. But yeah, I just loved that scene, because I was like, oh, I'm back in school again, this is brilliant. So yeah, and um, <laughs> I don't think we can talk about great scenes without referring to the ending. I think the ending's going to have to be a whole subject near the end for well, everyone, we, I think. We will go for the ending 
just before we summarise. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. right. That's yeah, so right. I've got a few things I want to mention. Well, yes, yeah, I think I want to speak more about how the film gets to that ending as well. But that's okay. Do you want to go on to major cons now? Because I know you have. Well, I just, I just. What's one, your favourite f- first? Oh, I was going to say one, one just a favourite scene is is that whole sequence uh, in the dream world where her dad is on the horizon and that whole sequence where they're playing hide yeah, and seek. I go with that. As well. Incredible. Yeah. There is. Another, I, at first I, I questioned it as an inconsistency, but then the more I thought about it, I thought that's actually really clever. Was when she crossed out her dad's face and she crossed out Mark's face and she scrumpled the paper up and or not that whole thing. When it went back to the dream sequence and her dad's eyes were crossed out, and I thought, why? why what's happened? Nothing's happened to Mark. Why not? And then I realised because he was behind the window yeah. and she scribbled on the window. Yes. Yeah, and I just thought, and then you see it. Yeah. And that, I just thought that is yeah, that's so clever. That's so clever. I found that whole flipping between them so clever. Actually, another one. I know Michael mentioned it earlier that he hated it. I really liked the scene when they were checking the rubbish bags out. Because no, no, I never said I hated the scene. I just think just that's where really acting was yeah. shown. Be- because it just because you just had that scene where the dad had made me jump by going boom, mm. and she'd screwed up the paper, and it was going. You know, you could tell something was going to go very wrong. The tension of that scene. I never thought I'd be tense watching two women and some. I'm pretty sure a lot of those have been like soap soaps they been in quite a lot of stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. recognise quite a few of them. Them and two women check out rubbish bags. I was on the edge of my seat, which must mean there's something done well on that scene, I think. And also, uh, one more cool scene for me, when she floated upstairs. Because she was oh, getting yeah. carried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, fantastic, wasn't Weird. it? Like, they're my favourite scenes. If I had to choose one, I'd go with um, Gaz with the end that scene. It's just that whole where, sequence. Yeah, like the whole sequence when he's on the hill, he comes down and it's just brilliant. Well, it's two sequences because she wakes up in between half of it. That's true. Oh, that's yes. They get into the room, don't they? Oh, I have to choose one, do I? No, 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 I was just saying. I'm going to call that a whole sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole sequence. yeah that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Is that your favourite scene, Michael? Or have you got the one? No, uh, it was one of my favourites, especially when the ripping of the paper started to destroy the world. Yeah. And that's when you got the cracks in the fire to show that underneath that world there was a. There was a, a darkness anyway, I thought, to yeah. sort of give it. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, that, that fits into a lot of what we're going to get to near the end, doesn't it? Okay, we can't wait to get to the end. We can't wait Guys, to what's your worst bit, <laughs> sir? The worst bits, we've, we've touched on several of them quite already, even, I should say. Uh, the, the line delivery at the beginning, oh. the, the dubbing, which I know has a real, there's a real reason for it, but it really, really took me out of the film. The, the dub and the, the same for me there was no reason for it no and at one point I, I wasn't focused on what she was saying I was focused on why is why are her lips not lining up with the words can we just yeah, right I, I, I hate the dubbing too but listeners have heard about dubbing <laughs> so yeah the listeners have already heard about the bad dubbing for around 10 minutes I know so I know I keep going let's back move it. on because when you initially talked to us and talked to me before we started recording okay. you said you really weren't really that much of a fan of this film no. So well, is it just a dub, and there must be something else. The, the, the fact that it's, this probably should really go in the summary of the whole thing, but everything in the dream world is great. The problem is you have to wait thirty percent of the film to even start getting there, and then you keep I keep I kept getting pulled out, and as she did, and it's really the parts in the real world that I don't like in this film. Okay. I know it's world. I know it's world building, and I know it has saying. to be in there. Fifty percent of this film is great. Fifty percent of this film is not great, Sorry. and that's why I'm so middle of the road with it. Yeah, and I, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. Definitely, I, I think that's yeah. I forgave it more because I was so enraptured by the dream world, and there were scenes in the real world I did enjoy, as I've mentioned. But yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I, I'm I'm glad I've seen it. And I, like I said, I don't hate it. I just don't love it either. No. And and you know you could say they're my final thoughts, but they won't be. <laughs> <laughs> the big one then. Right. The ending. The ending. Yes. Can I just say it. one thing? Please. Like I, like I mentioned earlier on, this is the kind of film that you're gonna. Every single person could take something different from this. It's not a film that closes itself off and tells you exactly what happens. You've got to really think about it. Um, Can I? Before you talk about the ending, mm-hmm. now just briefly mention what I've heard, because I read a few reviews after, I didn't read anything beforehand because I wanted to go in so fresh, I didn't know anything apart from the score on IMDb. Um, but one of the main criticisms that I read was almost like Lord of the Rings ish, it had multiple endings. 
It did. I was going to mention that. I don't know if you remember, but when she wakes up from the massive, brilliant scene, yeah, and we find out that Dad's died, yeah, and she becomes she almost she doesn't embrace it. That's the wrong way to say, but she's not fine with it. That's also, but she's I don't know. She's she's settled, I suppose you could say. Um, She's free of the dream world. The dad arrives. He seems to be better if he did have an alcohol issue. He says, let's go away, Let, you know, let's sort this out together. I thought that was it, okay? And then I looked at the clock and it was 68 minutes. I was like, mm, we've got something else. There was a lot of, end- there was at least three or four that could have, they could have ended it and you would still be closed. Yeah. Couldn't they, yeah. Because we've been to the lighthouse. We, didn't, we haven't mentioned the lighthouse, have we? No, no, not yet. No, no. Um, but yeah, there were several endings. I didn't mind it as that much, but I thought it did drag the pace a bit down, especially when it really stepped it up. And I thought I did see that as one of the main criticisms that it does have several endings. For me, I was okay with it, but I can see why people. I think they could have cut out one of the endings. Well, they could have cut out a section of the endings at the beginning. Yeah. Kept the one where she's on the cliff reaching up. Oh, and definitely. Then, and then cut the the actual ending off. And just have a reaching up and then pull the credits there. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, and then yeah. either way. But I think maybe it was meant to be like that because I always got the feeling with that, and the other ending was added on so it wasn't too dark for mm. everyone. Mm. Like the final ending where she embraces her parents was the impression she was now going to live and she'd see him later because she knows he's all right. Yeah. Talking about Mark because I think one of the underwhelming tones of the story was um, I got the feeling that when she came out and she was getting better I thought she was going to kill herself to get back in I really got the feeling oh well, yeah yeah in that's, fact that's when it took a really dark tone yeah even though it felt more light because they were going on this holiday and um, to this seaside resort and the dad seemed okay and she was almost settled with the fact Mark died in the back of her head she wanted to still kill herself to go back and be with Mark so teen, this film let's be honest it dealt with teenage suicide yeah. which is, I think it yeah which in fact the dark. original writer of the book wasn't happy with some of that part of it uh, Marianne uh, the book um, what's her name Catherine Storr and then she literally killed herself a few years later herself in real life the writer of the oh, book yeah there's a lot of dark parts of this story oh, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't get wow. me wrong she, she was um I think she was in her 80s at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, but still, no. Still not great, though, is it? I mean, no, not at all. You never want to. But I think, yeah, um, there was too many endings. Yeah. Lord of the Rings style. I think they could have cut a little bit out. And I did get the feeling that she, like, on that cliff, at the very end when she's reaching up, I thought you she was going to grab it and fly off. But then the camera was going to pan down and she was at the bottom Ooh, of the cliff. Nice. I actually got that impression that's what it was going to wow. be. Yeah, but then, you know, the parents grab her and then you feel a bit, you're like, because I was on edge, I was like, Ooh. I but, don't yeah. know. I think if this had been a straight horror film, maybe it would finish like that because it's a fantasy film. Because it was made in the 80s and because it's so British, I don't think they'd have ever finished it like that. They have wanted him to. I, mean, I kind of had a similar, I looked at it a similar way to you. I didn't. I didn't go the way of she was going to grab it and fly off, but then the camera would cut back and she'd be diving off the cliff. I thought she was on the, the ladder, but her parents wouldn't can't see the helicopter, and I thought they were just going to see her fall off the edge of the cliff as she was trying to reach for it. Um, and then a, a part of me thought maybe the helicopter is supposed to signify actual death and him flying off to it, whereas she it wasn't her time. And then that's when she was like, Which oh, okay. She, maybe why she couldn't she kind of made peace. Her. Yeah, that's why she made peace with it right at the end when she hugged her dad. And she was like, he's okay. I know he's okay. I think it's definitely one of them films where you could talk for 10 hours straight and not have yeah. that. Oh, yeah, happens. definitely, yeah. It is. Um, it's got a lot of things. It's got, it's got uh, Structurally speaking, it's got a really sound story. But um, you can take from that story what you will. Teenage suicide, uh, loneliness, depression. Because uh, the kid was depressed after he crashed his yeah. bike and basically didn't well, want to get up. Bike, yeah. what bike that was. Oh, oh the that dream bike. Yeah, yeah. Dad destroyed that. I was so annoyed. But I mean, we should explain to the listener about the helicopter. Um, oh, good. Sorry, yes. Yeah, because we, we spoke about Mark had written, drawn a picture for it in the lighthouse. Well, she took, she took a pencil to the lighthouse, didn't she, okay. so that they could draw oh, anything they needed? Oh, yes. When she draws a pencil to take into the dream and she says, now we can draw what we now we can do 
draw what we need. Yeah. That's when I realised she was thinking of permanently yeah. going there. That because bit, sorry. He draws a helicopter. Yeah. Helicopter, yeah. And that's the and that's the way he gets away. Yeah. And then that's how he dies. And I think he says on the back, "I'll be back for you," or something like that. If yeah, he leaves a letter, doesn't he? Yeah. She finds a letter. She goes to the actual lighthouse that she sees, <laughs> and she can't get in, obviously. But then she finds a letter under a rock, and he, he does say on there that and yeah, he's going to come back for her. Returns, and you're assuming to take her as well, or in her mind, she yeah. wants to be yeah. taken. I'm not I sure. Think she, I think she she wanted to be back with him, and that would have mean killing there's, herself. There's several ways. Isn't it? She can't quite reach the ladder, which probably means it isn't her time. Um, and in fact, it's just down to reach. I also couldn't work out how there's a voice and it's saying, you're too close to the edge. Was that Mark? Yes. Or was that? Well, I... The Mark? helicopter or the parents? It I thought it was Mark, but then as the scene went on, I, in my mind, I way. thought maybe she's hearing Mark, but it's actually her parents telling her she's it too close to get more away. like her mum. Yeah. Near the because I had my wife with me, and I said, oh, Mark's telling her to get away. And she went, no, it's not Mark, it's her mum. So I think the voice, I don't know. I think it changed. Again, it changed to being a mum. I think Mark was also saying, it's not your time, yeah, stop, yeah. go back. Um, because I don't think Mark wanted her dead. No, no of course, no. I no. think Mark just wanted to be out of limbo and meet her at some point in the future. Because now he's he's resting, if you will. Yeah. And he wants her to have a good life before she then. But what I found sad from the very beginning as well, with, to do with Mark, is she asks him why he's there, and he tells her, I've done something wrong. Yeah. He, he thinks he's done something wrong to be there. Yeah, because he says something similar to, like, you must have done something. She says, I've not yeah. done anything wrong. Yeah. It's um, a lot of stuff in that movie. When you watch this if I do recommend going to see this movie, definitely. Yeah, I know it's for literally every minute of it so far, but... You, if, you listen, if you listen to this podcast, and you've been listening to this podcast for the three episodes we've now done... You know we talk spoilers. Yeah, massively. <laughs> but I would still go and see this because you'd probably see it differently to how we have. Definitely, yeah. And that's, what's, that's what I think is really good about it. Regardless of... There are a few cons, which I'm pretty more forgiving of than some people. Mm. Um, but I think <laughs> any film that at the end of it, us three could argue about the ending for a good two hours over a pint. And no one would be wrong. Film. And no one would be right. That's 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 just, a good yeah. film for me. And that's a good. That's a film to invest in. And that is the fifty percent of this film that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, one more thing. Sorry, please. We've got. We've got some more. Mister. The, the helicopter. I don't know if anyone else picked this up. The helicopter noise we hear. We also hear in an earlier scene. Did anyone else pick this up? I didn't actually. No. Not like an immediately recall. Right when she's scribbling out the drawing, there's yeah. a helicopter noise in the background. I'm. Well, I'm 90% sure. What are you taking from that? Then? Well, I don't know. What, is this foreboding? Is this telling us well, the path we're going to lead to? And there's no other reason for it, is there? So, so you, I suppose you could think of it as, as she's destroying the world, basically, with the scribbling it out, the helicopter is, is destruction, death. Maybe? Well, I'm not sure. But I'm 90% I, sure I, I don't, don't think remember hearing that. It might have been, it was late, and I misheard. I don't think no, 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 no. We no. live in a coastal town. Was it actually the helicopter? Maybe, going past? maybe, <laughs> the, maybe yeah. the helicopter going over. But I'm ninety-five percent sure I heard a helicopter in that scene. I don't remember hearing. So if that was in there, that's it's again, quite a dramatic then, scene because she's like, uh, yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah. at the same time, I heard a helicopter. Okay. That would add so much more to the story as well. I know, but one of the scenes in the real world you enjoyed. Don't know that one. You might <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, shall we some more? I'd, I'd like to go first because okay. I've been very on the fence with this film I'm going to take Michael's comment you must see this film not because it's bad not because it's good it's an experience and my the one drawback is that it takes so long to get going for me and without your heads up Richard I probably would have switched it off <laughs> and just a minute and, and yeah and just coming to this podcast going I've got loads of trivia because I didn't actually watch the film <laughs> <laughs> and, and I if you can get past that 20-30 minutes where you think what is this even about you will be rewarded because the whole dream house sequence everything in that is so superbly done and it's a great story and the music is great and Richard is looking like he wants to score take words out score out of 10 well I, I, I should have to go a different way oh. uh, because it's called Paper House oh, okay. uh, I, and because I'm on the fence 
I gave this four pieces of wet tissue out of seven. <laughs> because one, because uh, seven. Be, yeah, because there's seven points I had, seven like subsections, if you well, will. I've been thinking over the last couple of weeks because Gaz hates rating score systems. rating okay. systems, and I only mentioned it the second podcast because he hates it anyway. Yeah. I've thought of another system. Oh, I like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. it. It's a, very simple. It's not if it's good or bad. It is. You're glad I recommended it, and would you recommend it to someone else? That's it. Oh, that's because. I don't mm. like to diss any movie totally. Yeah. And, and give it a Okay, go, okay, going on that. Yes, I'm glad you recommended it because I'm glad I've seen it, despite that I have a few flaws with it. Mm. And in a weird twist of fate, yes, I would recommend it because despite all its flaws, this is a film that I think you have to see because, like we've said, you can watch it and take something completely different away from it than, yeah. than we have. So, yes, watch it and Just, then recommend it. There's a few people online that say once you first fell, the first half an hour, that's it. The whole sequence is a dream, even the real life mm. stuff. Uh, coming in our hospital, people have said it's about suicide. There's so many things people have taken from this movie. I would definitely recommend it. I'm glad you recommended it. Um, I wasn't saying that 20 minutes. No, I was just about to say that. The first 20 minutes, I was like, I was saying maybe two minutes. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, I know. I'm glad you recommended it. I would definitely recommend anyone to watch it. I mean, I love I, I love most of the UK cinema, and I, I I can watch a film shot in the UK just for the gorgeous UK landscapes. This one, you some beautiful oh, scenery. Yeah, yeah. You can you can get away with a lot when it hits me with like some seaside towns. And I'm going to give it a rating because I don't mind as much as uh, mm. guys. I'm going to give it an eight. That's fairly high. I know it's fairly high. high, and believe me, that rose throughout. Yeah, well, yeah, I can see why it would. Yeah, it was yeah. getting a three or a four, and my mm -hmm. because I was so enraptured by the last bit, I was just like, this. I kept Brian. This is amazing. This is amazing. Why did it start so slow? This is amazing. Eight. So yeah, yeah eight. The scribblings of a madman. The scribblings of a madman referring to a so, film. So, Michael, what would you get after you? Because you saw it, you know, a few couple of years after it was released. Only saw clips. I never watched the whole film. I can imagine, like you said, if you watched this on Channel 4 late as a kid, there are scenes in there that would really... It's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. The house, the house, when she first goes up to it, is the image I've always had in my head with the wonky windows yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. It's a film that I'm glad I watched again. Well, glad I watched fully. I would definitely recommend it to someone else again. Um, to me, do some really beautiful scenes in it. And I just like a film that has just practical effects. I like a film that is very well written, which I thought this was. The direction was 50-50, and I don't know if that was intentional. The Dream World was directed beautifully. The normal world was a bit made for TV, but i seen some of Bernard Rose's later stuff. Maybe that was an intentional thing. This is the man that direct, directed The Immortal Beloved, Candyman. You know, he, he has got a lot of talent, so maybe that was the whole point of having them two worlds totally drastic apart maybe that's because they are so polarizing to me especially they are so polarizing maybe you're right maybe i should watch it again with that fresh approach to it for me the, the harshest scene i'm going to say not the favorite is definitely the bit with the cpr and the pounding of the heart and where yeah. you brought that into the story later yeah. and some of it it was a very haunting film and i took a different thing than my two colleagues here took from it i want to know why it's not more well known after watching it again now, I just don't understand why it's not a well-known film. I think a lot of people watch the first bit. It's a bit grainy. It's the transfer's not brilliant. I think if they, I think you could get away with a lot if they cleaned up the transfer on it, stuck it on a special edition or something, which people love special editions. I, mean, I do love special it. editions because it does look a little bit cheap. From you know when you gave me the case, and this is very much. It took a long time for the actual DVD release yeah, to come out. Yeah, exactly. It looks a bit cheap. The transfer isn't great. I think as they cleaned it up and put in a snazzy case and said, and showcased it for what it is. Coming soon think, from yeah, Three Men in a Podcast, the Lost Classic Collection. DVD and Blu-ray yes. multi. Yes, crowdfund me. Yes. <laughs> and well, lots of people are doing that now. They are, yeah. yeah, company yeah. Re, you know, bring that it can't company. cost that much to get distribution rights right, for no. Paperhouse. <laughs> anyway, Someone will pay us anyway, to do it. Anyway, I are we mentioning what we're going to do next? Or I, was, I was going to go into that, yes, before we finally sign off. Uh, now, 
we, we, we've kind of come up with a little structure, I think. Our very first podcast, our Zero podcast, was A Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake, because we thought that was a nice sort of ground zero to get yeah, into. we had a lot to say about it. We had a huge amount to mm. say about that. And then Richard chose The Others, which was our last podcast. Michael chose Paper House. And I've been elected to choose one for next time. And I think I've gone with The Visit. The primary reason is because I love M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, the M. Night Shyamalan one? Yeah, which one are you thinking? Oh, the 70s one. I've already ordered it. Oh, sorry. I'll, I've... I'll be ordering uh, the other one anyway. I thought you had taste. Maybe we could I'm I joking, do of have course. Taste. I'm joking, of course. What, the whole thing? So, you, which one have you actually ordered? I haven't yet. Oh, that's good then. That's well, right. Yeah, that's okay then. So, yes, our next podcast will be on The Visit, which I really like, and I don't know about these two. And so, it's a goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me, your gracious host, and Michael. And it's a goodbye from me. I'll speak to you again in a few weeks. Thank you so far, so far, for the support. Keep it coming, because we love you guys.